Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Fellow Toastmasters and guests. I want to tell you a story that really happened to me when I was about 12 years old. That was quite a long time ago. Probably only one other person in this room that can remember back that far. <laughs> <laughs> I won't mention your name. But at that time, this was in May of 1944. World War II was raging in Europe. And my dad and I lived in Hartsville, South Carolina, in the middle of the Bible Belt of the South. And we had to drive to Darlington, where my mother was hospitalized at the time, to visit her. We spent the day there, and then we had to return back to Hartsville, where we lived. Gasoline was rationed. We were able to get just barely enough gasoline to be able to make this trip while she was there and get back home again. And we got ready to leave that evening to return home. And right in the middle of downtown Darlington, South Carolina, we ran out of gas. This was on a Sunday afternoon. And in the middle of the Bible Belt, in those days, they had something they called blue laws. The blue laws were based on the religion of the people, pretty much, for the United States Congress. Well, the Supreme Court said it didn't. It really did, I think. And that blue law indicated that no business could be open on Sunday because it was considered a holy time. So on Sunday, the only business, the only places that were open was the church, a pharmacy, and not just a full drugstore, just the pharmacy, the hospital, the fire station, and the police department. Everything else was shut down. We ran out of gas right in front of a gas station, which was closed <laughs> because it was Sunday. We asked a passerby if he knew where the owner of that station was. Oh yeah, he lives in that big white house three blocks down the street. So we walked down there from that Sunday afternoon. There was this big white house, picket fence out front around it. There were several pre-teenage boys playing touch football in the front yard. And on the porch, the big front porch, rocking chairs were the parents. The woman was sitting there knitting. The father was rooting the boys on out the yard. And they had a little table next to them with tea and cookies on it. And my dad spoke to the man and said, Do you own a gas station down the street? Yeah, I do. Why don't you come on up and have some cookies and tea with us? So we went on up to the front porch. They pulled some chairs out. And we had cookies and we had tea. We had the very best in southern hospitality. Until we told the gentleman what we wanted. We've run out of gas in front of your gas station, and we need to get enough gasoline to get us home. And he says, I don't sell gas on Sunday. And we said, well, can you make an exception? Because we're stranded. We just have no way of getting out of here without some gasoline. He said, I don't sell gas on Sunday for two reasons. One, the law says I can't. And two, it's against my religion. I don't do that. And so we sat there and had some more tea and cookies and my dad was trying to think what are we going to do next. And we saw a sign on the two front windows. One of them said, we have a son in the Army. The other sign says, we have a son in the Navy. And thinking quickly, my dad says, uh, I notice you've got two sons in the service. Yes, we have. Well, you must have some extra room in the house. Could you rent us a room for the night? And then tomorrow morning, we'll buy some gas from you and leave. And his wife looked up from her knitting and gave a hard glare. <laughs> and the husband kind of looked back at her. She went back to her knitting and said nothing. He stood up and said, well, you say you parked right down there in front of my station? Yeah. OK, boys, buy it, Billy JJ, call the kids. We're going to walk down and see what this man's got down there. So we walked walk down to his gas station told my dad to get in the front seat and steer, and he had his three boys push the car up next to the gas pump. Had a big padlock. Reaches in, he gets his keys out, and he opens the padlock. He says, now, you're going how far? About 25 miles? 
Maybe a gallon and a half ought to do you, but I'll put two in just to be sure. So you put two gallons of gas in, started to padlock it again, and my dad reached for his billfold and says, well, how much do I owe you? He says, I keep telling you, mister, I don't sell gas on Sunday, but you guys are up against it, so there's nothing that says I can't help you out. So I'm going to give you enough gas to get you home. And I've never forgotten that man and how conflicted he was at trying to reach a moral decision that he thought was right and still be true to his own beliefs. But I think he set a good example there for all of us. This one I heard when I was 12 years old and I've never forgotten. Just a question.